Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I typically do reviews and reactions to the things on the news, TV shows, celeb news, things like that. Today, I have quite a bit to unpack. If you guys have seen Matt James post on Instagram, I'm gonna discuss that at the end because I don't wanna take away from the review. And if you stay until the end, you'll see what I have to say about that. But typically whenever I do TV reviews, I have notes on the side because I take notes throughout the entirety of the episode. So if you see me looking over, I'm probably just looking through the notes. So I go in chronological order. So let's get into it. So we are reminded multiple, multiple times that it's hometown weeks, meaning that Matt meets each of the contestants families whether that's their parents siblings things like that and it just gets that much more real because you wouldn't bring someone home that you weren't serious about which is kind of like a foreshadowing of what happens later. Chris Harrison reminds them that and it's like hey like if you're not feeling it that this is probably not for you or you might kind of realize your feelings after this because again you wouldn't want to have your parents meet someone that you don't see yourself marrying because at the end of this he has to propose to somebody or I don't want to say he has to, but that's kind of the premise of the show after. I didn't realize until the first date that they had to plan out their dates themselves, which makes sense. Like you want to kind of show The Bachelor or The Bachelor what like your hometown, like what makes it so like homey to you. Each of the contestants plan out their hometown little date and like things that kind of remind them of home and things that they love about it. Michelle is the first hometown date. And I feel like I just had to address that I liked her since she got there. I liked their first one-on-one -on -one date. But we haven't had much airtime of her until now, which kind of just shows you maybe there's things we missed or they just have that strong of a connection despite her having not that much airtime. But their day started out with a little bike ride and shows Michelle taking him to a little classroom setting. As a teacher, and like just like the whole like classroom feel, then they go down to this kind of auditorium looking thing. You see all of her students currently on a Zoom call and it was just really, really like heartwarming for some reason. I don't know why, it was just super cute. I'm presuming that this is filmed during fall, considering that she had students in session. So this wasn't that long ago that this was filmed and everything happened, but it was super cute. Her students would ask Matt little sincere questions or pointed questions because you know kids are too damn honest. I just feel like they have a genuine connection they have since she entered the house. And it shows that much more because she was one of the late, she was one of the, like the later people added. So imagine that there's people who were there before her and she still made that much of a lasting impression on Matt. Matt meets her parents and her dad asked Michelle if she would accept Matt's proposal if he asked her. And she said, yes, this is very essential because some people were asked this question and they were kind of hesitant. I feel like if you're able to say yes, even to your parents, that just shows how much more real your feelings are for the um, for the bachelor, sorry. And yeah, she said yes. And I think she is genuine about it. You can tell when someone's being fake or they're not real about their feelings. And it seems like she's at that place where she is. Her dad asked Matt if he was falling in love with her and he said he was, but he hadn't told her yet. And that's something I also want to kind of refer to later. So it was like, okay, like that's cool. But like you told her dad, but you haven't told her. So like, I don't want to say that doesn't mean anything, but like I need you to address that to her directly, not to her father, not for her father to go and run and tell her, but you to tell her directly before it's too late. What was heartbreaking to me, even if I'm not the person on the show, Michelle told Matt that she's fallen in love with him and Matt just kissed her and smiled. Um, He could have said it back. He said that he said he was to her father, but he didn't tell her that. That was fishy to me. I don't know why that was the case. I don't, yeah, I don't know why he didn't tell her, but beyond me. We next see Rachel and Matt and she pulled up in this weird get up kind of ride and blindfolded him to like surprise destination. They end up doing like a whole skydiving out of a plane thing. Never done that. It's scary as hell. And I knew that she was going to hit the fan based off the trailer. It seems that someone plummets into the ground. Someone meaning her. He landed gracefully after it all. She, I don't know what happened, but her body hit that ground hard. And I was just like, oh no. I don't know, but I mean, considering that we heard all the rumors about who potentially wins and stuff like that, I was just like, okay, I mean, I don't know. She seems fine. When she was on the ground and like really hurt, she said her back was in pain. She said her face bruised up. He said the moment she was in pain is when he said he realized how he felt about her, meaning like, wow, like this is a really vulnerable moment for her. And I'm here having to see her like that. And that just shows you how much more like I'm feeling for her. I'm like, I get it because like you don't want to see your loved ones hurt, but Matt, do what you want. If you're gonna pick Rachel and her whole cotillion antebellum ass, then do it. But you know, that's beyond me. We see them meet her parents and her sister and her dad grilled Matt kind of, and was just kind of like, I don't understand how you could be simultaneously falling in love with multiple people at the same time. Sir, that is the premise of the show. This is what it is. I'm not saying that parents understand that or agree with that when they let their children or whatever go on here, but that's just what it is. And he's like, I just don't feel it. Like, I just don't see how you could. And then Matt goes to Rachel after to kind of tell her how the conversation went. And then in Rachel's confessional, she was saying that she was upset that he didn't ask for her dad's permission, which is what she really wanted or would like really love that from him. But why would Matt ask for permission when your dad was grilling him like that? And also when we're all assuming the homegirl is racist and such. So it probably stems from families is how it goes. Sometimes you learn racist ways. So who knows? We, we're not really sure. She was upset about that. But what stuck with me is that she said, I'm falling in love with you. 
and he said it back. Several people have told him that they're falling in love with him, but I think she was like one, if not the only one that he said it back to. So I was like, if that's not a cue about how the end of the show is gonna go, hmm, I don't know. But that was pretty fishy to me in the sense of like, why can't he reciprocate that with the other women? And that just shows him, that just shows us how much further along he's with Rachel versus the other three women. Next, we see Brie and Matt and we see Brie pull up in Jeep and Sis was whipping that stuff around the dirt and the mud. She was flying. I'm like, what do you do with that after? Like, is the car not scuffed? Is it not dirty? How do you return that to a rental or whatever that was rented for that purpose? I was just like, I don't know. I know I talk too much about this kind of stuff, like the little things that don't matter, but I was like, okay. I mean, cool date considering that they had like an ATV thing and they fell over last time or she did. And now we're doing this and you're risking that too in this whole ass Jeep. But cool, they're having a little fun now. They're having a little getting down dirty kind of date. They eventually have a sentimental moment when they park and discuss their family dynamics if you don't remember from the first few episodes she comes from a single family home and so does he so they kind of bond on that situation specifically and yeah but all besides that I just feel like they do have a good connection but they're all at different levels between him and all the other women so it's really hard to really like gauge where he's at aside from him and Rachel her mother her best friend Brie same name and her baby sister were there for her hometown it was cute to see everything it was just like a cute conversation again her mother is essentially the father and mother figure in her life so she was there to grill everything and essentially be both roles when talking to Matt and it was like pretty serious when he was talking to her it was pretty emotional because everyone's saying how they're falling for him and how hard it might be if he breaks her heart and not necessarily that he would break their heart but like their heart would get broken he doesn't pick them. Serena <laughs> If you watched the episode, you know, I'm having that nervous laugh. <laughs> Serena and Matt State was her teaching him about Canadian history, the origins, the cuisine, the slang, because she's from Can Canada. She said she was born and raised there. So she felt like teaching him about her home. And I'm like, I'm jealous of that. I'm jealous that you can rep your city and be proud of it or rep your area and be proud of it. Like, go for it. But she was telling him about everything. She had some flags everywhere, stuff like that. And it was a lot different than how their yoga date went. But also not much more like they were smiling but then when things got kind of serious her face was kind of just like yeah so I mean still and it was just like very down in a weird way so I'm like Serena where's your head at in regards to this we see her parents and her sibling it was cute but her sister is like are you in love with him are you falling in love with him and then she was like well on paper he's this I'm like no sis Serena he asked you sorry not he she asked you are you in love with him not what is your type? She asked you a specific yes or no question with a yes or no answer prompted for that. And she kind of danced around it. I'm like, homegirl is not there. We all been knowing that. But it's like really unfortunate that it took this long for her to find out that she wasn't all the way there. Maybe that happens often. I'm not sure. Matt kind of talked to her after. He's like, how's your family thing? She's like, yeah. Um, uh. She's like, yeah, um, my family session was good. But her sister was the one who told her. She's like, I think you're smitten. Not really like in love with him. Like you're just smitten about the situation and like, I don't know, I don't think you're there yet. Even her mom was like, I think you're kind of like still mending from like a broken heart that you had not too long ago. And you're just not really completely all the way there. I'm like, everyone in her family is either staying in a confessional or directly to her. So it's kind of like, sheesh. And I know again, you either know when you know essentially about being in love or just not. But I just wish if she was feeling this way, she maybe could have addressed this sooner. Maybe it takes that much longer for you to realize it, but I just don't really understand. She did eventually say that something was missing. And I feel like as soon as you say that, it's over. It's a wrap. Like if something's missing, then it's not there for you. After the date, Chris Harrison and Matt have a little one-on-one -on -one sesh with each other. And he's like, things are kind of weird with Serena. He's venting to him about it and also to us and saying like, he just doesn't think that she's all the way there. Her emotions and reactions to some of the conversations have been a little flat. He doesn't really know why, but he's like ready to go talk to her about it. And Chris is like, you were smitten with her from the beginning. Like you really liked her. He's like, yeah, I did. So that's why like, I care enough to go and like actually talk to her. I could see her being my wife. I could see me being with her in the long term. I was like, <laughs> homeboy needs to go talk to her because homeboy's about to get hurt real quick because we already know how she's feeling. So he eventually pulls up to her area, her little villa, and she's kind of just down. She's not dressed up considering that it's about to be the rose ceremony. And she, again, she's not dressed up at all. And he's just like, hey, so... I could see you being my wife. I'm trying to understand like where your head's at. I feel like you're not really there and like eager as you used to be. I could see us being long term, but I just don't think you're at that place. I want to understand what's getting there and I want to like guide you there if that's necessary. And she's just like, I'm not there. <laughs> she's yeah, she's like, I'm not there and you're not my person. And I said, golly. Kit did this like last episode of the week before this, but not at the hometown. But now it's like you emotionally invested this much time just to do it now. Like, I feel like you kind of already would have known where your feelings were at prior to this, but 
And I felt really bad because he actually looks really broken about it. I can only imagine like he's had quite a bit of people like drop off prematurely rather than him actually eliminating them. And this late too, after he's already said like he's like actually envisioning a future with her. But she went home. He She went home prior to the rose ceremony. So it'd be really curious to see who he would have eliminated if she actually would have made it to it. He gives out the roses to all of them. It went in this order, Michelle. Rachel and Brie and Brie felt really apprehensive about the fact that she was given the last rose. I get it because no one wants to be last but you're also in the top three the final three and then but I do get it and that's really unfortunate because you don't want to be the last person but I'm like mm. this is just panning out very wild because I'm just not really expecting these people to be leaving the way they are or maybe his feelings because I feel like it was one of those seasons where for me it was really hard to like really know who he was in love with or like this is the dead set winner. I'm not really sure. I mean Yes, there's a rumors about who won, but if that didn't happen, I don't know if I would be able to guess this because everyone's just like, oh, I can see it now, but that's because we presumably know who won. That was the review. I'm now going to discuss Matt James's post on Instagram. He addressed the things that were going on with Chris Harrison, Rachel Lindsay, and Rachel Kirkconnell, who's in the final three. So I'd done a video on this about the situation with Chris Harrison and Rachel Lindsay and how he reacted to her during that interview, how it was inappropriate, how he was talking over her and was justifying Rachel Kirkconnell's racist past. Rachel apologized after this whole thing blew up and then everyone was kind of like waiting on Matt James. Although it's not his place to really address anything, although he is The Bachelor, I just feel like he's had a really hard time since becoming Bachelor. People were saying he was only announced because this was during the Black Lives Matter movement last year so they're like oh they picked a black bachelor because of this and then when he was on there everyone was kind of judging him about whether he's going to pick a black woman when he is biracial so it's not obligated he needs to pick someone who's black but people were kind of tearing up about that as well and then now this situation it just sucks this is his season to find love and just try it out because this is his first time ever even being on the bachelor let alone as a contestant as the bachelor and now he has all this nonsense the fact that he had to address it at all but he addressed it in his own time I, I like that it wasn't like when everyone else was doing it he did it when he felt like it was the right time and basically he said the past few weeks have been some of the most challenging in my life there are a few episodes left in the season it's important I take time to address the things that have come to light including the disappointing photos of Rachel Kirkconnell and the interview between Rachel Lindsay and Chris Harrison. He also addresses what it's like to be a black man in America and just the things that come along with that if you're black or allies with someone in the black community, you understand how hard that is. So I'm really glad he's able to address this on this platform. It is very unfortunate that on a, such a amazing time in his life as being The Bachelor, which is a one-off tant, it doesn't happen often, he has to do things like this because of the stuff that's not even related to him. The Rachel thing wasn't related to him. That was prior to this and it kind of ruined and tainted, I guess, what's going on this season. But I'm really glad he did this. Again, I feel really bad, but I'm glad that he did this. Now, Bachelor, where are you at? Bachelor, where is your statement addressing Chris Harrison's thing? Where is your statement addressing Rachel Connell's photos? I haven't seen anything. The franchise itself has not spoken out, but the castmates have. But anyways, see you on the next video. Bye!